All right, if you have your Bible, if you stand for a minute, you need to stand, been sitting for some time. Turn to book in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 9. 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 9. You read first in 2 Peter, you'll, you'll begin to love this apostle, the one who went out and wept bitterly. He said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 9, the apostle says, But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Father, bless your word now as it goes forth. In thy name I pray. Amen. I don't know if you've noticed or not lately, but you're going to hear and have been hearing a little, a little short phrase. Live for the moment. How many's heard that? You're going to hear a lot of it. This is the way they do you. They brainwash you. And uh, they, a lot of times they do it by repetition. Live for the moment. So what does that mean? That means forget where you came from, forget where you're going. Most animals live for the moment. So they want to reduce you to that of an animal. And of course they've been doing that in a lot of different ways. But I want to call your attention to something this morning so very important. We are not animals. We are men made in the image of God. And God made us and he had a special reason for it. If we note carefully, before he ever did anything, as far as it relates to man, he already prepared it. The Bible said in Ephesians 1, 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 8, the scripture says, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Plain words, in the mind of God, it was a completed thing before it ever happened. The apostle says in 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Our Lord God never reacts to anything. Known unto God are all of his ways. Amen. The Bible in the book of Proverbs has a remarkable thing. Proverbs chapter 8, if you'd like to turn there. There's some, uh, it's, it's, it's an odd the way it says this, but it's the kind of thing that'll make you think. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22, the scripture says, The Lord, this is capital uppercase, L-O-R-D, so this is Jehovah. It's the tetragrammaton, yod Hey vau Re uh, Proverbs 8, verse 22, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Verse number 26, Proverbs 8, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. Now who is the I? This is wisdom, and this is wisdom personified. This is wisdom as it relates to the Almighty. This is wisdom before he ever made anything. The mind of God was involved in it. We're not an accident. There's a reason for us being here. Do you ever lie and wake at night wondering what all of this is about? Does it ever bother you that another generation follows another generation, that follows another generation, that follows another generation? Have you ever wondered why? Why do we continue on? Why does the Lord not come back? Why hasn't he come back in the last hundred years? The apostle says that with him a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. And you go back and check the time when Adam was made. Bishop said, Archbishop Usher says, about 4,000 B.C. Puts us at 2,000 A.D. We're in the seventh day. We're approaching that seventh day. A week with the Almighty. My little short lifespan is not even a tick on the clock compared to this one that is from everlasting to everlasting. Ever thought about the mind of God? Do you think he's reacting to what's happening now? Do you think this caught him off guard? Do you think the Lord's wringing his hands and trying to figure out, now what am I going to do? Look what a mess I've created. No, 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 no. In Proverbs chapter number 8 and verse number 30, Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Look at that. Look at that, with the sons of men. Hebrews chapter number two and verse number six poses the question, in one in a certain place testified, what is man? He's not an angel, he's not a cherubim, he's not a seraphim, he's not a watcher, he's a man. The first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy. When God formed that body from the dust of the ground, he had a body. 
But the very life of that man came from the very heart of God. For he created something for that man that did not exist up until that time. What is that? Breath. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. From thenceforth throughout the scripture, man is associated with breath. You ought to go look it up at home this afternoon. How many times it talks about the breath of man, his life in his nostrils. We breathe. Our Lord God came into this world 2,000 years ago. And the first thing he did when he came forth from the virgin's womb was breathe. The last thing he did before he died upon that cross was breathe. He breathed in at the incarnation and breathed out when he left this world. That why well, didn't he breathe before that? No, God doesn't need breath. God doesn't need air. God doesn't need space. God doesn't need time. He needs nothing. He resides in his own element. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He's the eternal I am. Amen. So the breath is connected to man. A whole new form of life came forth from the very heart and the inside of God. If somebody asks you where man came from, you can tell them he came from inside God. So therefore the breath of God became the soul of man. What a beautiful thing. What is man that thou art mindful? And you suppose that one so precious in the eyes of the Almighty that he might have a plan for us? You suppose that from time immemorial, from the ages past, there was a reason for us being here today? You suppose that it might be important for God himself to become a man? 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus Christ was God Almighty, but he was also a man. Amen. And when he went to the cross, he died as a man. Oh, yes. There's an old message in the book of Psalm, chapter number 19. They look up into the heavens and say, the heavens declare the glory of God. And then in verse number 5 of Psalm 19, a beautiful picture set for us. In the heavens, folks, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. My, my, my. You mean all of this is in the heavens? Oh, there's a beauty up there. It's for us if we want to behold it. The hog and the pig can only look down at his trough. But those of you that are men and women, God's given a desire to know him. And you can know him as much as you want to know him. Lift up your head. Look above you. This Nazareth, as Job talks about, written 1,900 years before Christ. Job has a lot to say about the heavens. He has a lot to say about what's going on above us. In Job chapter 38, verse 31, he says, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Nazareth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus? You say, what are you talking about? The word of God wasn't written until 1,400 years before Christ. God said, Moses, write a book. And Moses is dated about 1400 B.C. Look at Job. He's 1900 B.C. 500 years before the first scripture was ever written. Job says, look up. Nazareth is up there. There's a message in the heavens and in the clouds. Job chapter number 9 and verse number 7. The scripture says, which commandeth the sun and it riseth not. Verse 9, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. And the Bible says in Job chapter 26 and verse 13, hath formed the crooked serpent. All of the message of redemption from Virgo to Leo is written in the sky. Amen. It's written and it was written there before it was ever, ever written on paper. Why? Because generation after generation after generation after generation lived out their lives and died and never saw a book. But all they had to do was look up for that ancient knowledge was passed from generation to generation. God has always left himself with a witness. Amen. So with Virgo to Leo, it's amazing too. When you get into anthropology and begin to study the origins of man, you'll find that all over this world, all over the world, folks, they have some sort of a knowledge, limited or whatever it might be, of Nazareth of the constellations, of the heavens, of what's going on above them. What does that tell you? That tells you at one time God left a witness of himself with these people. But you see, when it came to writing the word of God, he chose one. He chose the Jew. And they became the keepers of the oracles of God. This is why the Bible you have in your hands this morning was written by Jews. Amen. Yeah. To them was given the oracles of God. They were the ones who kept God's word and passed it down to us. And I can be thankful for that. 
But the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or who hath been his counselor? That's quite a thing, don't you think? Did he ever ask anyone? The Bible says in Romans chapter number three and verse number four, <laughs> I want you to think about what I'm reading to you. The Bible says in Romans three, four, God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. The day will come when creation will look at the creator and begin to ask questions. Why are we here? Where did we come from? What was this all about? When thou art judged. You mean men will judge God? The Bible says, look at you. You're going to judge angels. And the Bible says the day will come when you will judge the world. Who's the you? The church of God. Every last one of us in this house today, we will one day judge. Why? Because we're sons of God. That's why. We've been born of the Spirit of God. We've been given the Word of God. And my friend, the Holy Ghost resides within our soul. We've lived lives on this earth. What qualifies Christ to go to the right hand of the Father and become a high priest for us? Not because he's the creator. That doesn't qualify him. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Not because he put man on this earth and breathed into his nostrils. That doesn't qualify him to become the high priest at the right hand of the Father. My friend, what qualifies him, preacher? It's sinless, perfect life on this earth. Every breath you draw, he drew. Every temptation you have, he had. Every sorrow you endure, he endured. And therefore, it uniquely qualifies Christ to be the representative of all mankind at the right hand of the Father. And when you read the Romans chapter number 8, you'll learn by reading Romans chapter number 8 that he knows so much about God and about humanity that the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Amen. Amen. He deeply prays. He prays in a much greater way than we could possibly pray. And I thank God for it. Amen. I'm not left to my feelings as to what sin is. I'm not left to how I feel something as to what my relationship with the Almighty is. My relationship with God is through Christ Jesus, my Lord. Whether I feel good or don't feel good, whether I'm conscious of sin or not conscious of sin, Christ Jesus, the Lord, is the one that connects me with Almighty God. Don't ever get away from that, folks. Don't ever get into your feelings. Your feelings can mess you up big time. Revelation chapter number 5 and verse number 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. When we come down to the time of Jacob's trouble the last seven years on this earth when men have, have, have lived their time. They've, the Gentile kingdoms started in 606 BC have now come to a crushing halt. And that image, that image it is, has been destroyed by that stone cut out of a mountain, smites it on its feet, down it comes. Remember, the Gentile kingdoms that you're living part of right now, that's not the church of God. That's in here right now. You heard it singing a minute ago. I felt the Holy Ghost as he moved out from this place. Oh, what a sweetness, what a life. Hey Amen, about five minutes of that will pump you up. That'll give you some life. Amen. God bless your soul. Some of you, your chin's dragging the ground. Amen. Wake up today. Our redemption draws nigh. I don't want you to leave here sad. I'd like for you to leave here in victory, joy, and peace. Amen. Knowing that he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. But thanks be unto God, they say worthy's the lamb. He's worthy. That's quite a thing. I don't have time to get into all that, but that's a beautiful thing because they know the Lamb of God. They recognize who he is and what he has accomplished. Did he accomplish it? At the cross when he died, did he not say it is finished? Did he not say that? Did he not say in the book of Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 10 that he reconciled us to God by his death on the cross? That God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself? not imputing their trespasses unto them and committed to us the ministry, the word of reconciliation. Be ye reconciled to God. What's wrong with you and God? Are you mad at him? Why are you mad at him? What's the problem? Did he not treat you right? We got an issue going on today. Amen. Amen. That's the issue between you and God. God's right and I'm wrong. He's never failed me, never will fail me. So why do you continue in your sin? Why do you hate him? Why do you turn on him? Why do you curse his son? Why do you curse his name? Because he could do no more for you than what he did at the cross. He died for you. 
took your sin and became sin for us who knew no sin. The apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 12, and whom, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves the prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of a salvation that was to come. A salvation that even the Bible says the angels desired to look into. The Old Testament saints were saved, but they did not know the salvation that you know. If you're born again this morning, something's happened to you. Amen. Amen. And it's hard. It's the ministry of Christ. It's the ministry of the, of the Word of God. It's the ministry of the minister that what I do is to try to get you to understand your salvation's not up here. It's down here. I've got to get that over to you. You believe all the things you're supposed to believe. You do what you think you should do. You want to live a good life. You're a good moral person. You go to church. You tithe your income, but you're still lost. You don't know him. Knowing him here will never save you. You've got to get it down here. As Randy Pike used to say, a dear brother's gone on to be with the Lord. He said, there's 18 inches between heaven and hell. And so many have it here. East Tennessee is full of cultural Christianity. God and country and family and here's my fifth of liquor. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Don't sign on to that, dear friend. I'm all for God, all for country. We got a flag right here. All oh, that's all fine in its place. But that will never save your soul. Never, 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 never. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter number 2 and verse number 7, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. He didn't create the soul. The soul came into being. Why? Because the Spirit of God now had entered into a piece of clay. Clay in the hand of the Almighty. Clay. He picked that hand of clay up. Here's Michael. Here's Gabriel. Here's the angels. Here's all of them. Look at what are you going to do with this clay? Well, that's nothing but dirt. Why, good night, I've walked on that. That's nothing but dirt. Until the Almighty begins to fashion it. All of the future of humanity, everything we ever, ever, ever hope to be, started with a pile of dirt. That's all. And the mind of God. You ever thought about how that God can take your life this morning? And a lot of people, a lot of people are bad about this, kicking each other down, stomping each other down, vilifying each other. You're no good. How many of you grew up in a home where your parents said, you're no good, you'll never be any good? Or how many of you grew up in a home where they compared you with your sister or your brother? That's horrible, but that happens all the time. And they set aside one child over the other, and you've lived like that, and that all your life. Let me tell you something. It's not about your ability. It's not about who you are or what you can do. It's about his creative ability. He can take dirt and turn it in, my dear friend, to what he did in that garden. He'll take your life if you'll give it to him this morning. Say, Lord, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to walk down there and get on my knees. And say, all right, Lord. That preacher's up there yelling, screaming, stomping, sweating, carrying. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to trust him for a minute. Here's my life. The Lord will say, thank you. Uh, let's set it over here out of the way right now. I got something a whole lot better for you. And he'll put you on a path that will lead you higher and higher and higher. And... Now, what am I up here? I mean, here you are in here, 19... this is 2024. All this in here about, I've been here 48 years. Folks, I ought to be in hell. If you knew how I lived before I got saved, if you knew where I came from, let me tell you something. Satan won't let me forget it, but I also remember it too because I know where he brought me from. I say that. I don't say that to make, you know, listen. I know there's an awful lot of preachers out there that you never hear him confess any sin. I'll confess them for all day long. You want to get around? Let's go down to the lake and fish all night and I'll confess all night. <laughs> I've got plenty of sins to confess. And I thanks be unto God when I confess them, he forgives me, cleanses me. When the Apostle Paul said, of all the sinners on this earth, he said, I'm chief. I agree with him. I am too. I am too. I am too. Do you really get a hold of what I'm saying? Do you really believe that you're a sinner? Because I know an awful lot of self-righteous, pumped up, pharisaical Christians, and they can't handle what I'm talking about. The Bible tells me over here in Genesis 2, 7, he formed man of the dust of the ground. He brought a new being into existence. 
He didn't ask anyone any questions. He didn't ask any. He didn't take counsel of his angels. He said, this is what I'm going to do, and he did it. He brought him into existence. Amen. He brought him into being. Then he asked the questions in the book of Hebrew. What is man? But none of them understood that one day he himself would become a man. For the one that made Adam was the one who died for Adam. <laughs> The one who breathed into Adam's nostrils is the one who breathed out his last on the cross. The one who breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life is the one who said, Peter, one day you're going to walk away from me when that cock crows. You're going to walk, Peter. Oh, no, Lord, no way. You're going to learn something about yourself, Peter. But it's going to take a hard lick to do it. And that's the way some of us are. It takes a hard lick to do it. I want you to notice something about this, though. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, through breath, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is uniquely connected with man in a special way. Yes, he is. He's uniquely connected to us. We should beg for the moving of the Holy Spirit. We should plead for the filling of the Holy Spirit. We get ourselves all pumped up and we feel, you know, we've accomplished this, accomplished that's all. You know, that's, that's man. But we need the Holy Spirit. I mean, we really need the Holy Spirit. We really need the Holy Ghost. He, to, he goes out into the field and he digs up the stone, queries it from the dirt. Then he takes that stone and a master mason, and guess who that master mason is? Fashions that stone before it ever goes into the building. Now try that sometime. And when he brings that stone and places it into the wall, it fits perfectly. But it doesn't stop at that. He covers it with wood. Where does he get the wood? He cuts it down. Standing. He cuts down a life. He cuts it down and covers the stone. Like our Lord Jesus was cut down out of the land of the living. You remember? Amen. To cover his humanity covers that stone. It has to, because there can't be a touch of the stone with the gold. It won't work. But then he comes with the gold. All that precious metal. My, my, my. That metal. That metal. That's the only gold I've got on me right here. That's it. And that's because of that little thing sitting on that back row back there. <laughs> this December the 9th will be 58 years. Bless her heart. Now, love her, love her, love her, love her. Gold. Metal. It's a metal. Now, let me warn you this, boys. Don't get this around electricity. It'll eat you up. This is a conductor of electricity like you have never seen. It will. It will eat you alive. Gold is an outstanding conductor of electricity. And so we have that. But what's the gold? It represents the deity, the purity, or oh, the majesty. In plain words, the stone dug out of the dirt, covered with the wood of his humanity, and now the gold of the righteousness of Christ. This righteousness of Christ is this perfect sinless life he lived when he was here on this earth. And God says, you're ready now. And now the Father can walk into your midst by the power of the Holy Ghost. And all he sees or wants to see is the righteousness of the Son of God. Amen. Oh, it's all left to us. It's a simple thing. If you get on your face and pour your heart out to God, confess your sin and say, Lord Jesus, I'm just a dirty, rotten, low-down, stinking sinner. i got no hope without Christ. That my righteousness is a filthy rag. I'm going to hell if it wasn't for him. Lord, have mercy on me and really mean it. The Holy Ghost would fill you and he'd fill you and he'd fill you. And the power of God, the habitation of God by the Spirit would come into this place. And there's nothing on this earth like it. There's no substitute for it. And that's what we need. Now I'm going to close with this one here because this is one that's most precious to me of all of them. John chapter number 3, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say to thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. That means born of God, born from above, born not of this world. Any, any way you'd like to say it, it literally means your new birth, your new life has come forth from God. He's the only one. For by one spirit we all baptized in one body. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. You're in Christ the moment of salvation. But you see, you've been born again. That means that your essence has changed. You're not what you used to be. You're not. If you really have been born again, 
You try to go back to some of the old haunts you used to go to, it's not comfortable, is it? Bothers you, doesn't it? Get around that old crowd you used to run with and their filthy mouth starts opening up, it's kind of embarrassing, doesn't it? Kind of, kind, of, kind of makes you feel bad inside. You hear people uh, blaspheming God and taking his name in vain, it, it bothers you. It ought to bother you because now the Holy Ghost is living in you. And every time you hear it, you begin to grieve him. And so the Holy Spirit, I'm a new creature in Christ. I've been accepted in the beloved in Christ. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. I'm now an heir, a joint heir with Christ. And I have direct access to God through his son. The Bible says, what you need is time. He will show who is that blessed and only potentate. The King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can see, which no man hath seen, to whom be honor and power everlasting, that invisible being. Satan said, I will be like the Most High God. I will be like him. The only thing you could ever do, Satan, is to try to be like his manifestations that you saw when you were with Job, how he made himself known to you. But all he did when he made himself known to you, Satan, is, all he want, is what he allowed you to see. You see, the Lord said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they'll do what? They'll see God. You see, there's none, 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 none that have ever seen him in his pure essence, that eternal spirit, that absolute being. Yet in our Lord Jesus Christ, because I'm born again, one day I'll see him as he is. And it'll start through the sun. What a blessedness it is to think I was dug from the dirt. Well, they went to the sewer to find me. That's where they got me. I was dug, but I wasn't left in the dirt. Oh, no, 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 no. The master builder. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. He cut me from that. He cleansed me. Then he covered me with his own righteousness, his humanity. Then he placed me, placed me, placed me into that wall. Now, I'm, don't make anybody mad in here this morning. Nothing, no, no bones to pick personally but you can't keep me out of the wall. And it's not up to you whether I get into the wall or not. You see, he put me in the wall. He never gave, he never gave any, 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 any ecclesiastical authority the power to take you out of that wall. Once you've been put in that wall, you are part of the body of Christ. He's building his church. And then he covered me with his righteousness and then he covered me with his glory. And hallelujah to God, I get to be in there when the Holy Spirit moves through and that Holy One comes in. I live by that. I live by that. Oh, I'll go home today and I'll, 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 yes, I'll, I'll, I'll live by what I had today. Oh, last Sunday morning, you should have heard him then. Oh, good night. How many of you remember the choir last Sunday morning? Good night. You say, well, I, I, I got to step up on you because I'm sitting right here. I mean, I've got all this right behind me coming out. Can't miss it. What a blessing. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have this. I mean, what purpose would I have in life? Why would I be living? Why, why would I be here? What's this? What am I? I'm 78 years old. Somebody said, you're pushing 80, preacher. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm pushing it. It's pushing me too. <laughs> Lord of mercy is working me over. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> I mean, all about it. But thanks be unto God. I've got this. I just, just soon be gone if, if I didn't have... I ran into a preacher yesterday at, at a restaurant. I run into, the rest, it's amazing how at restaurants you run into preachers. <laughs> Beats all I've ever seen. <laughs> I've known him, I've known him over 40 years. He said, are you still preaching? I said, I'm still breathing. <laughs> as long as I'm breathing, I'm preaching. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm here for. Amen. That's what I live for. I've been born again. Have you been born again? I'm not talking about have you, signed, have you been confirmed, signed up, you believe this, some, you know, some declaration of faith or whatever. No, you know, they've trained you, they've presented you, they've prepared you, they've baptized you, they've, they've worked you, they've given you everything. But now my dear friend, have you been born again? Uh, my life changed drastically. It did. Man, I used to, places I used to go to. But in 1973, it all changed. <laughs> Bang, just like that. I never went back. Why? I had no desire to go. But I had a hunger in here for God. Where'd that come from? I mean a hunger for God. 
I mean a hunger for God. And I pray as I get older, Lord, don't ever let that die. It's not always the same. I'm not always as hungry. I'm real. <laughs> but I have a hunger for him. And I want to know him. And I want to be closer to him. And I want his power in my life. How about you? How about you? This is all good. Thank God for it. And I thank God, I really do, that you care enough about this preacher to come out a lot of older folks in here, faces that folks I've known for decades, for years. I'm so glad to see all of you. God bless every one of you. Amen. I pray the good Lord blesses you and, you know, continues to uh, uh, prosper you. But folks, you've missed it if you don't understand this. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Have you been born again? Have you been born again? Would you bow your head with me for a moment? Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You've been good to me. Oh, how you have been good to me. Now bless your righteous name. If you mind the house, raise your hand. Say, Preacher Lawson, nobody's looking, but I want this to be private between you and the Lord. Say, Preacher, I want you to pray for me because I'm not sure. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. That's good. Be honest. Nobody's going to drag anybody around. God bless you. Anybody else? Raise your hand. We've had hands go up now. Anybody else? God bless you. There's another hand there. I'm not sure, preacher. Well, that's what I'm for. I'm the minister of the gospel. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing what I'm called to do. I'm called to get your word out. God bless you. There's another hand. Anyone else raise that hand? Say, Preacher Lawson, I don't know, and I'm going to tell you something, preacher, just to be honest with you. I'm so cold and callous right now that I don't even know if I care. You say, what kind of a thing is that? That's real world, folks. Is there anybody who would raise your hand and say, Preacher, that's me. But I know that there's got to be more than this. I know there's got to be more than what's going on in my life. Would you pray for me, Preacher? And I'll be glad to. Anybody raise your hand this morning and say, Preacher, I need something. I need it and need it bad. Don't even know what I need. Anybody raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, you saw these hands. This is your time, Lord, your time now. And I, I know I need to be careful with this. I know that, Lord, I'm, I'm the minister, but I'm not the Holy Ghost. And so, Father, I've given out what you've given me, and now I back up, and I'll let you do your work in this place. I pray for the ones who raise their hands, and I pray for them, and I pray you'd help them, and I pray you'd lead them by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' sweet, sweet, sweet name I pray, amen.